Well, joining me now is Ertherin Cousin, who's the Chief Dire Executive Director of the United Nations World Food Programme. Welcome to you, you indeed. Uh, obviously, the, the, the food programme is trying to deal with uh, famine and hunger. Yes. Are the people who most need help the people who are caught in, in war zones in Africa and, mm -hmm. and in the Middle East? They, the, the challenge is getting access to people on a regular basis. Um, we've just seen the story of the challenges of, of people living in Raqqa. We have no access into Raqqa. We have not been in Raqqa for over a year. We have no access, as you know, into Aleppo. There are areas in South Sudan today where we have no access outside the city of Wa, where we know there are thousands of people in need of food assistance. And so conflict is now posing a challenge to our ability to meet the needs of the most vulnerable people in the world. And, and, and how does the process of identifying a problem, working through the United Nations, getting food to people work? Well, in, in normal circumstances, we work with governments to, to assess the challenges, target the most vulnerable, and then working with UNICEF, UNHCR, other partners, we devise a package of support. And WFP is the head of the logistics cluster. And so we work with getting the trucks and the other partners, NGOs and others, to deliver that assistance into the communities of people where they're needed to those people who we've identified as most in need. And we've seen that the convoys held up and on occasions uh, being attacked. So representing the United Nations, as it were, the peaceful world is, is no guarantee of passage or safety. Unfortunately, today it is not. The entire global community has signed up to the humanitarian principles, yet too often humanitarian actors, and uh, the United Nations in, in, in particular, is targeted uh, and um, we are unable then to provide the assistance that is required. And does this even affect refugees as well? People in camps. Yeah. It affects those camps where we can't access the camps. Usually, though, by the time a person gets into a camp, we can provide assistance to them. They're outside the area of conflict uh, in in um, <clears throat> in. Jordan, for example, today, we are providing support in the camps. In Lebanon, we're providing support in the camp and to those who live in the host communities. The same thing is true across sub-Saharan Africa. But the challenge, for example, in Jordan, uh, you have almost 80,000 people who are at the border between Syria and Jordan. They've set up an informal camp there that we can't access them. And do you have the, the food you need? Because, as we know, the United Nations targets for donations have not been hit. The global community has never been more generous. We are receiving a significant amount of resources, but the need is greater than it's ever been. We have never, as the UN community, have never been required to respond to so many conflicts simultaneously. And so, no, we don't have enough of the financial support that is required to meet the needs. Here in the UK, DFID has been tremendously generous to us, but what we are asking all governments is to consider that this is an extraordinary time and we require additional Assistance. And there's a growing argument within aid communities and aid experts that actually what seems most difficult to people don donating is actually cash payments may be the best way and the most efficient way of really helping the people who need it. The type of intervention that we provide, whether it's in-kind assistance through food or cash assistance, should be determined by the context. Inside Syria, we're providing food. In Jordan, we're providing a cash-based transfer, a voucher yeah. that allows the individual to go into existing grocery stores and shop for food. Yeah. If there is no food available, then aid, then, then yeah. uh, food but aid the is what is required. The argument is cash can sometimes be more efficient way of doing it. Uh, cash is more efficient when there's there's food or other or other humanitarian uh, items available for purchase. If those items yeah. aren't for available for purchase, you can't give people food uh, cash to eat. Just want to ask you <clears> the <throat> new um, UN Secretary General, Mr. Guterres. Uh, he, of course, has been working with refugees uh, until very recently. Uh, do you think that will mark a significant change in the direction of the UN? 
I think the, one of the, the leading experts on refugees and what is necessary to meet the needs of those who find themselves required to move is Antonio Guterres. Yeah. Uh, the, sec the, uh, the Security Council and hopefully the General Assembly couldn't have made a better choice for the situation that the world is in today. Of course, you're, you're here partly for the Women in the World Summit and we're still waiting for our first woman, Secretary General. From your mouth to God's ears, we are all still hopeful. But uh, if it couldn't been a, couldn't have been a woman, you couldn't get a, m a better feminist than Antonio Guterres. Catherine Cousin, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you for this opportunity. This is all out politics. Coming up next.